stigma around being a part of a cult. You know, you don't know you're in it. You don't know you're signing up for it. NBC4 investigates looking into claims that uh, Central Ohio Church is functioning as a cult. Jamie Ostroff continues the investigation we first brought you Monday evening with details on how the group gets people to join and what happens once they do. Jamie. Yeah, Audrey, former members of Xenos Christian Fellowship, which changed its name to Dwell Community Church in 2020, say recruitment starts early. They tell me as teens, new members are invited to activities and made to feel comfortable opening up about intimate details of their lives. But once they've committed, they say the tone shifts. Alexandra Craig was first asked to attend a Xenos Bible study when she was in middle school. From there, she started attending social events. In middle school, you do a fun activity, like, for example, a grocery scavenger hunt, something like that. Now called Dwell Community Church, the group has ministries specifically for middle schoolers, high schoolers, and college students. When I asked Dwell leadership to connect me with current members, a spokesperson instead sent me a link to recorded testimonials. These members say Dwell has been a positive influence in their lives. God has shown me what it looks like to have a fulfilling life. What I found presented at Home Church was that Christ was really about being with you and meeting you where you were. Craig said she too felt welcome at first. At first they treated me awesome. I felt like I was the center of attention. I was the spotlight. I was the new shiny toy. Like I, I felt like I was it. Making new members feel special is a common tactic of cults known as love bombing, says Megan Cox. They prey on obviously people who need to fill a void and want more out of life. Cox belonged to a cult in Tennessee and is now working on a docu-series to expose cults around the U.S. And then they take that want and they turn it into something that they can harness and use. That's exactly what happens to Xenos members, says Mark Kennedy, who joined in high school. You see is subtle manipulations and what you see is things are just small red flags. Kennedy and other former Xenos members say trust among peers and disciples or mentors is often exploited. I saw, you know, sexual information that was extracted from, you know, literally minors being shared with these, you know, adults and these, these college students. I saw someone brought in front of the entire church and have all their sexual history, real and made up, in front of like 20 people brought up and they were, they were shamed and they were, you know, they were treated horribly. This is an 11 page form former members say disciples fill out about members. Not only does it include questions about the members financial contributions to the church, it asks about things like how much the member shares about themselves, their sexuality, character issues such as sarcasm and whether they have a killer instinct when giving the gospel. Craig says her character issues involved openly questioning leadership. I was kind of confused about how it spread from one person to another to now the entire leadership team knows kind of what's going on with me. Her mentors approached her about it multiple times. Because at first I thought they were really looking out for my walk with God and they were looking more into like, hey, they want me to be this better person. They have expectations. But slowly it turned into like what you said, like a head on a swivel. Like, should I watch what I'm saying more? Should I just not question things? Craig says it was her questioning that led to her mentors asking her to leave Xenos after seven years. Is that a church? No, I don't consider that a church. I do not consider that a church at all. What would you consider Xenos? I would consider it a cult. Dwell denied my request to interview leadership, but an elder answered my questions via email. When I asked about gossip, he said, quote, our church is a tight knit community of people who love God and love serving our city. An unfortunate aspect of any community is people tend to gossip. We teach that shame slash guilt are destructive and ineffective at helping people grow spiritually. I also asked if that 11 page form was real. I sent a couple of pages over. The elder said the church does have a goals worksheet and that it is possible that someone adapted or edited that document in his words. When I spoke to former Xenos members, another big part of their story was potentially dangerous living arrangements. Tomorrow we'll hear from one woman who said she was coached by Xenos leadership to lie about the conditions in church affiliated homes.